You've got to know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Know when to walk away. <laughs> Sometimes you need to know when you should walk away from an Airbnb. Uh, this really applies to all rental properties, whether it's long-term or short-term, but specifically in my case, I just sold an Airbnb. No, this is not an April Fool's joke. I know that it's April Fool's, but I wanted to talk about why I sold my Airbnb because it's something that I think is like a, a good lesson in knowing when to throw in the towel. Tail? <laughs> I don't even know why I said it that way. So I'm going to walk you through my process, my thought process, everything. But I do want to clean the slate a little bit and say I have been really professing for a long time to reinvest back into your Airbnb. You've seen this over and over and over again on the Raw Bill channel. I'm a big fan of dumping money into your properties. Oh man, is this camera crooked? Doesn't matter. You're going to have to watch me crooked. Um, I've been investing into my properties like pickleball courts. I added that treehouse deck not too long ago. I actually just poured another pickleball court at my college station property. And so I think there's a really compelling case for why I didn't do that with this property. So let's talk about it. This property specifically is in West Virginia. It's in the Berkeley Springs market. And I went back and forth on, hey, should I really go all out and should I dump 15, 20, 25K into this property? And ultimately I landed on no for one simple reason. This property does not bring me joy. Uh, it does not make me happy. I do not like this property. I never really have. Uh, and yes, could it make more money and could it make me more money? Totally. But at the end of the day, you should really be focusing on, especially in the Airbnb space, you should be focusing on properties that actually bring you creative fulfillment or is at the very least a satisfying property to own because it makes a decent amount of money. And for me, as I move into sort of the next phase of the raw built portfolio, I'm looking to prune some portfolios out of, I'm looking to prune, usually I would edit this out. I'm looking to prune some properties out of my portfolio because I want to really focus on launching very high-end, premium, unique Airbnbs or turning my current Airbnbs into that through my new interior design company called Funkit Interiors. I, you've probably followed the Pink Pickle progress that I've been posting about on Instagram, I've been talking about on the channel. And man, I got to be honest, it just makes me so much happier to own Airbnbs that I'm super proud of from a creative standpoint. And so it's not always a tangible ROI thing for me. It's not about how much cash flow it makes, how much money it makes. Uh, this property could have made $2,000 a month. We probably would have kept it, but in the back of my mind, I would always wanted to get rid of it. And so the, the real underlying issue that I've had with this specific property is that the labor force in West Virginia has not been good. It's not been good to me. Uh, I'm, I've always prided myself on being very good at building teams, my Airbnb Avengers, having an amazing cleaner, an amazing handyman, plumber, all that good stuff. And we do have a team out there that's been running this property semi-well, but just time and time again in the Berkeley Springs area, I've just been really disappointed with the quality of the labor force out there. Now, granted, I could have looked for more people. I could have gotten recommendations. I could put a lot more effort into it, but I've owned this place for a couple of years and I feel like I kind of have. And so for me, anytime I see the ball being dropped or quality being dropped and guests being unhappy consistently from a standpoint of just wanting to have a portfolio I'm proud of, I'm just kind of tired of dealing with it. And so that's kind of what led to this whole decision of like, hey, maybe I should sell this one. On top of it, <laughs> I probably should have led with this. It wasn't really making money either. Y'all y'all probably were like, oh yeah, you should have just said that first, not the, not the other stuff. Uh, it wasn't really making money, but I don't really care about that too much for a couple of reasons. I've talked about how when you buy an Airbnb investment or any real estate investment, there's four really key components that make it a really good investment. There's the tax benefits. There's the debt pay down, there's the appreciation and the cash flow. And on this specific property, it either broke even, maybe sometimes it lost a little bit of money, sometimes it made money. And like, I don't really care. Like, it's close enough to where the other three benefits usually outweigh the cash flow issue for me. But when you factor in the fact that I didn't really like the property, um, the labor force was really bad, it wasn't really making any money, I made the decision to just cut it loose. Me and my partner did, we bought it together. And you might be asking yourself, well, hey, I mean, aren't you really good at this Airbnb thing? Like, why was it, why would it ever lose money? I thought that you're really good at analyzing and comping or at the very least, like, shouldn't it be one of the top 10% properties in the market like you always preach? 
And the short answer is, yeah, kind of like this one is on me. I have to take accountability for not being as involved with it. But at that time when I bought that property, we were scaling very, very, very quickly, which is a problem that I think a lot of you probably face when you're getting into your third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth property. The quality control definitely starts to fall a little bit. And this came at a time in my journey when <clears throat> the quality control really, uh, yeah, it was lacking because I was just expanding so quickly. And so my partner was like, hey, I, I've heard about Berkeley Springs. I've heard about this. Like, I think it's a good market. I know a realtor out there. Do you want to go for it? And I was like, sure. And I trusted that. And honestly, he did great. Like he handled everything for me, got no issues at all. But I never actually corroborated the comps. I never actually looked at the property. I didn't set it up. I didn't fly there. And so like, I really had very little influence on the final outcome of the property. Now, it's not to say that I couldn't step in and make it better. Of course I can. But at the end of the day, like I really, uh, I think the biggest lesson I've learned time and time again in my entire career as a short-term rental host, real estate investor, is that I partner with really smart people. And because I partner with smart people, I tend to sort of like trust the comps and never really corroborate the numbers that they're underwriting. And it doesn't mean that their underwriting was incorrect or anything like that. It just means that sometimes you do need a, another layer of protection and, and accountability and scrutiny to really get to the final end point of like where you're trying to go, like a profitable Airbnb. So I looked at it, the numbers looked good. I think at this point I was really in my air DNA phase on the Airbnb side of things where I was like, yeah, air DNA says it's going to make this. And honestly, it was pretty close. Like we really are close to what we thought. But at the end of the day, the CapEx capital expenditures, maintenance really added up. And so when it rains, it pours. And so I think we had to replace like a plumbing system that was like $5,000 or it was a well system. We had to do a bunch of other things, like I think an AC repair. And so when you factor all that in, that's kind of what led to this break even, taking a loss, making a little bit of money and always just being right there. Um, so uh, I've recently, oh, the other really big moment here as to like why we kind of went into this is we sold Casa Mariposa. It's a house that we sold and I think we made like a $400,000 profit on something like that. And that specific property, like we sold it and we had to dump all that money into a 1031 exchange so that we wouldn't have to like pay capital gains. When you put something into a 1031 exchange, you're super, super rushed and you don't necessarily have a ton of time to find the best properties. So I think it was kind of like a combination of like, okay, we had this money sitting in the 1031 exchange. We found this market that seemed pretty cool and under undiscovered and honestly, Berkeley Springs is a great rental market, but I would buy a different type of house if I were going to if I were going to choose that rental market again. I would choose like a 4 or 5 bedroom and I think this was like a 2 bedroom. So we were really rushed. I didn't look at the comps, but it seemed like it was going to mostly work. We bought it. It kind of had some issues from a like, you know, a maintenance capex standpoint. And yeah, it's all been just kind of this like property that we've had and we've given it attention and we fix it up over time, but uh, I just don't want it anymore. Honestly, that, that's what it comes down to. And so we did talk about like, hey, let's invest 15K, 20K. Let's really make this place magical. But I just don't want to. There is a happiness ROI, I think, with short-term rentals that people don't keep in mind. So for me, I'm like, let's do it. Let's sell it. And I think overall, we did pretty good on this property because we bought it, I don't know, two years ago. And we posted a $120,000 profit. So it's not all that bad. Honestly, at the end of the day, it's not like I'm losing money here. I made, I, I got $60,000 to my name from this property. It was relatively automated. My assistant property manager ran it. I jumped in when needed. And for being hands off for the last two years and making $120,000 profit on this house total, it was pretty good. So what am I going to actually do now? Like, what is the next step for me? Where am I moving into? Well, you probably know this about me, but if you don't, let me be clear. I hate selling real estate not a fan. Even if it's like a Airbnb that's so-so, it does pay me to sell it because I'm not a big guy. I'm not a big sell my property type of person. So the way that I kind of offset that and combat that is that we're going to take this money and we're going to kick off three projects that I've had in the back burner now for a couple of weeks or for, for a couple of years out in Joshua Tree. Uh, I actually have three new constructions. Um, Caleb, I'll let you put one here put one here and put one right over my face. You can show the little tiny photo right here. Um, and 
these are projects that I've had permitted or I've had in the permitting process and I just never moved forward with them because to be honest, I just got super busy. I got super busy with the rest of my portfolio. I bought a motel. I do content. I've got several companies and I just wasn't really loving the Joshua tree market there for a little bit either. I was unsure. Um, but now I've got a very clear mind and I've got a very clear vision for what I want. And I think the only way to be successful in the Joshua tree market is to have a new high end, new construction, basically like nice modern stucco. That is the only, I have a student out there who just launched a property like last fall and he was booked solid for three months in advance. My business partner, the one that I built Mariposa with and the partner that owned this cabin in West Virginia, he just built an amazing property on Joshua tree and he's making like, I don't know, 10 to 15 grand a month out there, gross revenue. So now that I kind of know the formula, I want to kind of go back to Joshua tree and actually finish what I started, which is three really cool properties that will give me the creative fulfillment that I've been looking for. And I, they, they'll make pretty good money too. I'll be honest, but they're not, not all of them will kill it. Some of them will make decent money, good money, great money. I have three different ones. So it's kind of a scale, but even if they made kind of what the, what I was making in the job in the West Virginia place, like making a little bit of money, nothing crazy. I'd still be happy because it's a new place that I get to design and create from the ground up. And that to me is what makes this whole thing worth it. So that's where I'm at right now. Joshua tree is not dead to me. Uh, it has been for a little bit. I kind of took a step back because I just didn't really like the, what I was seeing there. And to be honest, I kind of did think that maybe for the first time ever, that could be one of the markets that was actually oversaturated. Um, and it is kind of saturated now, but it's saturated with sort of old remodeled bungalows or ranch style homes that I just don't think are performing super well out there at the moment. And the things that are performing super well are the high end properties. Now, with that said, I have Casa Conejo. That property makes way less money than whenever I launched it. Still profitable. I still make good money on it. I still send my mom and my dad money every single month. I give them all the profits to that property, but it, it, it's a significant decrease. I'll do a video on this later. That's why I don't want to get into the numbers yet because I'm already running longer than what I said I was going to do to Caleb. I was, like, I was like, I promise it'll be a short video, but that property, the revenue has decreased quite a bit. I don't want to sell it though. That's one where I probably will put thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 into the backyard to create like a enclosed fence area. I'm going to do like a really nice deck hot tub area. I'm going to do a pickleball court. I'm going to do a lot. And I think by doing that, I'll increase the revenue of that property pretty substantially. And I love that property. That property is my least uh, maintenance heavy property. It is the easiest property that I manage in, in my entire portfolio. And so even though it makes less money than when I launched in 2021, I don't really care because it literally out of all of my properties takes five minutes a week to manage with the systems that I have in place and the property manager that I have in place. It's really, really, really nice. And that's what I like. New constructions are great. That's really where I'm leaning towards in 2024 when people are like, Hey, how, what's the best use of my money in, in the Airbnb world? I really think it's uh, bursters, burr into short-term rentals, but more in the new construction side where you build a property, you refine, get all your money out. So that's what I'm going to be working on in Joshua Tree. Me and my partner are going to be using our proceeds to put into those builds. And I think it's going to be really great. So if you're in this position where you're like, hey, I'm, I'm where you're at, man. I've got this property. It's a pain in the butt. Most of the time I would say, hey, let's look at it. And let's review it and let's just make sure that there aren't simple levers that we can pull to help you make money. But if you've done that and you've maximized it, or if this property really just, even if it was performing super well, dang it, I should have muted my computer. It doesn't matter. Even if this, this property has the potential to perform super well, but it just has like a dark cloud over your head, I think it's okay to sell. Um, so long as you sell, you take the money and you move it into another property that actually cr fulfills your creative spirit. No, that's the dumbest thing I've ever said. Your creative mood, your creative thing, <laughs> your creative self. All right. Uh, as long as you're fulfilling your creative self, I think that's what the Airbnb space is. I think it's why it's a really special space to be in, in the real estate world, because I will always say that there's real estate out there for sure. Um, like long-term commercial. And that's really more for the analytical kind of regular investor that just wants the numbers and they care about the investment. I really think that the short-term rental space is for that real estate investor that just wants a little bit more. It's not just about the numbers, but it's about building something and managing something special, creating something special, an experience, hosting, bringing hospitality into the mix. That's what short-term rentals are for. And so 
if you're like struggling with the property, get out of it. Get into something that makes you happy because you're going to be in this for a long time. Guess what? A 30-year mortgage is 30 years. So you may as well like the properties that you own in your portfolio. So I'm not saying go out and sell or anything like that, but I did. And I feel great. We closed on the property on Friday. I got, we got the wire. I was like, oh, awesome. Monkey off my back. Let's go build and kick ass on something that I'm actually going to be passionate about. So I'll be talking about that uh, in the next couple of months on the Raw Built YouTube channel. If you like this style of video, if you like the one takes, I know it's ADHD. I know it's a little scrambled and I'm always searching for what I'm going to say. This is hard for me. I really like doing like the other Raw Built style videos, but I like to change it up sometimes and just speak from the heart and what I'm doing. Uh, like and subscribe to this video and I'll catch you on the next episode of Raw Built. All right, bye.